Okay. Ooh, why am I nervous to do this video? Ooh. <laughs> we are teeing because this video is brought on by a subject or a thing that's happening in my life right now. I was at the store, I think I was a week or two at this point, and I saw the cutest cash reg not cash register, cashier. I'm not in love with Pizza Machine. That's fucking weird. No, he was just like, oh, he was so tall. He had like the build that I usually go for. He had like a little tattoo right here. It wasn't really little, it was like that. His name was Noah. I made sure to see that because, girl, I didn't do anything else. I, I could barely speak. I was so caught off guard. I was like, oh my God. Hello, sir. You are a fine specimen. I should not be here right now. Because guess what? When we have a crush, we self-sabotage. We do everything in our power to make sure it doesn't happen because if it does happen, we might get hurt. You know, that's where we're at. No, but just thinking about this, and I was talking to my group chat a while ago and telling them stories about like, my past with boys and they were glued to them and I couldn't figure out why and they were like well it's because we always like we know you're alone we know you're sad and single but we don't really know the history of it and I'm like you're right future video idea so that's why I'm here to share with you today the multiple times I have fumbled my own bag when it comes to boys or just like funny little anecdotes that I can think of to be honest this could be a multi-part series um, but these are some of my favorites that I'm going to tell you today. So to give you like a real idea of where this starts, of why my history of dating is so sad and pathetic, we really need to go all the way back. Now I don't want to get too in detail on this one because I have made a video about it in the past, I'll leave a link, but to basically catch you up. <laughs> Basically what happened was when I was like six or seven, there was this guy that I was absolutely in love with. I was obsessed with. I was like, yes, you are the moon, you are the stars, you are the reason that the earth is spinning. <laughs> like, it was pretty insane. Everybody around me knew I was absolutely in love with him. And that's so sad. That's so sad, Ashley. Got it together. Anyway, he ended up actually being my first kiss. I know, it's super young. Um, I don't really remember who kissed to, but I just remember it happening and then me being like kind of embarrassed because I was like, Oh my god, like I shouldn't be doing this right. Like, oh, oh, I'm such a bad girl. <laughs> I don't remember the timeline, but fast forward in time, and he figures out that my best friend's actually prettier than me, and he sets up this interview between the two of us where he has someone else interview us on questions that he wants to know, and then decides from there who he wants to date. And guess what? It wasn't me. <laughs> I was so sad because I literally followed this bitch everywhere. We went to snack time, you wanna eat a pretzel? Yum, I love that salty ass bitch. We're at recess, you wanna play cars? Vroom vroom. I was so ready to be his girl. I was the biggest simp to ever exist. That's where we start. Anyway, so this real first story I have for you guys is kind of multi-layered to be honest. So I was in the sixth grade, I believe, fifth or sixth grade. And there was this guy who was just super obnoxious, right? Super loud, super annoying. Like now he would be the type, I'm sure he does this, honest to God, to be at a red light and like rev his engine, to be like, yeah, look how big my dick is. And everyone else is like, please shut up. That was him, but like sixth grade version. He would always follow everyone around and just kind of pick on them. So I never really paid attention to it when he did it to me. But I do remember there was this one time in particular I was with one of my friends, I don't remember her name. Let's call her like Natasha or something. Even though that might have actually been her name. I don't know. So I'm talking to her, he comes up to her and just starts like belittling her and like picking on her. And I was like, oh no, 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 you are not doing that to one of my girlies. So I started sticking up for her and he turns around to me. Why are you yelling at me? Why are you so mad? Like before you come talk to me, maybe you should go shave off your mustache. As an Italian woman, I can't help it, okay? But don't worry, I didn't sit there and take it. I turned around and I was like, at least I can grow one. <laughs> that shut him up real quick, best believe. Anyway, so fast forward a little bit in time and there's this one guy who had a crush on me. Um, I didn't really have a crush on him. Like he was a super sweet guy, super nice. I liked hanging out with him, but everyone kind of like, pressured me into dating him. Like this is middle school, you don't really date anyone. I just couldn't say no. So like, I guess I dated someone in sixth grade that, yeah. Anyway, so when the whole school found out, people were just like, oh my God, that's so cute. You're so cute, little. And then this bitch, little prepubescent mustache boy comes over and is like, 
oh, you're gonna date him, but you won't date me? And like, went on about it forever. Like the whole time that I was dating this other guy, he just was on my ass about it. And I was like, first of all, I didn't even know you liked me like that. And second of all, I guess this is where the whole saying of, oh, well, if they bully you, they like you. Bullshit saying comes from, which I don't fuck with. I'm sorry, you like me, court me. You know what I mean? Like, be nice to me. And then when we're kind of like, we get, we get to know each other, that's when you can pick on me. And I can pick on you. But like, this, I'm gonna bully you. I'm gonna crush your self-esteem. Yeah, no, it's not gonna work. Not today, little man, sorry. But then the best part is that when <laughs> I broke up with the other guy, right? I'm such a heartbreaker. He never like came back to me and was like, oh, we should date. I'm pretty sure he moved like the next year. But like, it was just so weird. I remember just being like, what is wrong with boys at that point? Because I was, I was very confused. And then on top of that, you had this other guy who like would never really talk to me ever like we kind of hung around in the same circle but then he would have someone else that i hung out with come and tell me be like oh this, this guy likes you like you guys should date but this boy that would tell me that was best friends with my enemy so i didn't really want to talk to him nor did i believe him but then the guy that liked me was best friends with the guy that i liked oh my god this whole telenovela ass Grade sixth grade was a wild ride for me. <laughs> Let me tell you honest to god. I think that was the worst year of middle school for me Honest to god. All right The next story I have for you guys is personally one of my favorites because it's really the one that I like kick myself in the ass for Because I'm like bruh, you could have had it all like you could have been that girl So I was a freshman and I was <laughs> I was in honors geometry literally kill me <laughs> the worst class of my entire high school career. I honest to God think that's where most of my anxiety with school came from was that class. But anyway, so I was a freshman, I was in geometry. So there was a lot of like different um, grade levels in that one class. And I remember on my first day of school um, with <laughs> this great teacher, we'll call her Satan. I think it really fits. We all came in, we fell in the class and wherever we sat was like our, our seat for the year without even knowing it. So thankfully I sat somewhat in the middle because one, I'm a blind ass bitch, can't see the board, but I'm also not about to sit in the front and be like that person. I'm also not gonna sit in the back. So she thought she had the power to call on me on questions that God and me know I did not have the answers to. But anyway, so I sat down, right? And the guy that sat in front of me, ooh, ooh, ooh bitch, ooh bitch. He sat down in his little letter, le lettersman lettersman jacket so i knew he was like an athlete which first of all i'm not really into athletes i'm usually into like the artistic kind of type but i i was seeing something i started my crutch on the first day of school did i do anything about it no <laughs> we started like doing partner work and it would be like okay you can turn to the person in front of you behind you or to the side of you now i had this girlfriend that's well not like girlfriend like friend that sat next to me her name i'm just gonna use her name her name was sam and i would always like kind of go for her as like please help me i don't want to talk to anyone else Hi. but one day he turned around and was like hey like let's work together on this and i was like <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I need like a two weeks notice before I can even talk to you. And now we're gonna work on this like in class, the whole 35 minutes we have to work on this, like it's just gonna be you and I. Oh shit. Oh shit. So we take out our little protractors and everything and <laughs> I wanted to strangle myself with it. But we're just working on it and like he starts talking and he's like, so you're a freshman? I'm like, yeah. Remember this, he's a sophomore, so he's a year older than me. Like literally he was my type. So, oh, mm, my type. I asked him, I was like, oh, I noticed your jacket. Like, what, what sports team are you on? And he was on the football team. He did volleyball. And when he said that, I was like, oh, I do volleyball. I play volleyball. So we kind of bonded over that. Like, and it was such like an easy conversation. It was just so good. And like, I was super nervous. I was shitting my pants the entire time. He was just super nice. And it was like nice to have that bonding time with him. So class ends and I'm like, okay, cool. I finally like got to talk to him. Is it gonna go anywhere? No, because he's never gonna talk to me again. Literally two days later, he turns around and is like asking me about a question. And I literally freaked out. I remember this to this day because again, kick myself in the ass. He turned around and asked me a question on this problem that we were working on. And to be honest, I didn't really know what I was doing. And I 
felt bad if I tried to help him. So I literally directed him to someone else and was like, they can help you. And I'm sitting there like, dumb bitch. Like, if you're gonna get it wrong, like get it wrong together. Cause then that's cute. But I didn't because I'm dumb. So we had a few instances like that, right? I never did anything about it because I was like, he's so out of my league. Why am I gonna set myself up for that? to just get hurt, like no thank you. But then there was one day that he like turned around, we were leaving class, right? And this was towards the end of the semester, right? So I wasn't gonna have this class with him anymore. And he turns around to me and he's like, oh, your last name, Ippolito, right? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh, um, I saw someone at like a football game or something like with that name and I thought of you. And I was like, oh really? What a weird, like what a coincidence, what a small world. And then left. I left. I left the room and didn't... <sighs> In my defense, I had to go to theater and that was on the other side of campus. Like, this bitch had to run. And I was so scared. He was talking to me and I was just like, fuck. Like, he literally had the initiative. Like, he was putting himself out there and I didn't take it. He put his line out and I just let it go because I'm a dumbass. I genuinely get so upset just thinking about it because I'm like, <sighs> cause I don't like making the first move because I already feel like an idiot. Like I need some little indication that you're into me and then maybe I can do it. But he literally just put it all out there and I got so intimidated. I was like, I'm a freshman, you're a sophomore, you're super cool, I'm not. I mean, really that was like a whole self-confidence issue with that whole situation, but. I don't know, I still think it's really funny to this day. <laughs> this story I was gonna leave for last because it's kind of the most recent, but um, I don't want to because it's so short and you guys are gonna kill me as soon as you hear about it. So I'm not gonna say who it is, but some celebrity, and he's a singer, which as we discovered, I'm very into artistic kind of guys, like sing me a song, play the piano. My legs are wide open. I'm sorry, but they are. I don't go on Instagram. I fucking hate Instagram. I think it's actual Satan garbage fire. It, it hurts my self-esteem. We've discovered I have issues. <laughs> like I know people who post on it and like the photos and this also oh perfect lifestyle. It's not real, it's all fabricated. But for some reason in my head, I think it still is, even though I know it's not. And then I think I have to post that way. I don't, it's a lot, it's too much. But anyway, so I never go on Instagram. I never really check my messages. I do now after this situation. But there was a period um, where I wasn't hacked, like recently, still a little bitter. There was a period where I didn't go on for like a really long time. Therefore, I wasn't checking my messages. And so <laughs> I post a video and then one of my friends tells me, wait a minute, Ashley, he follows you on Instagram. And I was like, girl, what? Why? So I go on Instagram and I'm like, oh my God, he does. So I follow him back and I was gonna write him and be like, oh my God, I just posted a video about you. Like, how funny is that? So I open up my DM so I can message him just to find out that he had already messaged me. And it was a very nice message. Um. And I'm like, holy shit, this is happening. So I look at the date that it was sent. I was six months late to this message. Six months, six months. Do we understand this? Six, 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 six months. months. So I write my, my message. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm such a flop. Hi. <laughs> But he never responded and I completely understand why. I left this boy on red for six, not even left him on red. I just didn't even see him for six months and a lot can change in six months. So yeah, I'm sure you guys can figure out who it is, but I just thought it was a funny story to share. <laughs> okay, and the last story that I have for you guys today is actually <laughs> one of my favorites because I didn't think it was ever gonna happen. I don't really have a conclusion to the story. I kind of made my own conclusion, which I tend to do a lot with situations in my life. So that's probably why I am the way that I am. Ooh, we love having therapy hour in the middle of a video. 
Okay, anyway, so this story happened quite a while ago, but I don't think I've ever fully gone into detail about what happened. So this was happening when I was pretty new still to YouTube. Like I still had my other job when I was working in retail. I don't even think I had like 50,000 subscribers yet on my music channel, but I started noticing on all of my posts on Instagram and Twitter, there was this guy that kept commenting on them and I started to notice him and I was like, okay, I see what you're doing. But again, Am I ever going to reach out and do anything about it? Absolutely not. Have we figured this out? I suck. Anyway, it wasn't until I posted something on Twitter. I, I wanted to say it was about me eating dinner or something. Like I was tweeting about something I was eating and he replied and I saw his response and it actually made me giggle. I was like, okay, you got humor. Perhaps we'll reply back. Perhaps we'll entertain this little idea real quick. And it just kind of started from there. Like he told me he was going to school, he was going to college, he wanted to be a teacher, he lived on the East Coast, blah, 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 blah. blah. Like we kind of were talking, gave him my number, <laughs> the whole thing, right? I don't really remember how like the downfall of it really started, but like we were really, like we were really talking. And there was one point where he was talking about like, oh, if you ever come to the East Coast, like, I want to see you, da 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 And he made a comment being like, I promise you I'm not a 40 year old man. Which I laughed at at the time. because I was like, haha, I know you're not. But then my radar went on because I was like, he doesn't send me photos. He has an Instagram, but he's like less active than I am which is sad. He has like three photos. Something looks a little weird here, right? So I keep my eye on it. He says another comment that's a little like, oh, a little sus. He actually makes another comment that makes me upset so I call him out on it. And then I kind of like don't talk to him for a day or two because I was like, I fucking hate boys. <laughs> but then I'm talking to one of my friends and I'm telling her about him. Just, you know, catching her up, being like, yeah, this is who I'm talking to. So then she asks, does he have an Instagram? I'm like, yeah, his name is she goes to type it on Instagram, sends me a screenshot, and is like, oh, this is him. And I'm like, the photo's him, but that's not the account that I follow. So then I send her a screenshot of the account I follow that I've been talking to. And she's like, oh, sis, you getting catfished. And I was like, sis, I think you're right. So I forgot what I said, but I made some kind of comment about it being like, ooh, I should probably call me even max I don't know I said something and the next thing I knew all of his posts on the Instagram that I follow were deleted like there was no post he had his profile photo still up but that was it and I was like I go on Twitter like he doesn't have any photos there like there's literally no evidence that this man even exists so I was like okay this um no so I just as much as I hate to say it I just kind of like ghosted him I was like I I don't know how to I'm not a I'm not big on confrontation. I was not about to be in his DMs, her DMs, their DMs, and be like, um, you're a catfish, goodbye. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was like, I'm just gonna quietly go away. And that's what I did. Like they would send me a message and I would just be like, oh, thanks. You liked my new video, thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. And that's kind of where that story ends. Like, like I said, there's really no conclusion to it. I just kind of made up my own because I was not, no. I was not about ready to do that. And it's so sad because like, I think that was the first time in a while that I'd really been comfortable talking to a guy. Like I really felt like I could kind of be myself and I have no idea who I was talking to. So, yeah, anyway. All right, anyway, those are some of the stories that I wanted to share with you guys today. I thought this would be really fun. If you enjoyed it, let me know. Um, I actually need to go to the store today. I need to go get some like cat litter and like batteries, you know, the essentials. So maybe I'll see my new boyfriend there. <laughs> anyway, if you guys want more story times in the future, let me know. I have so many stories. I have so many things to share that are all embarrassing, but I know that's what you love. So let me know. Anyway, I love you guys. Take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next one.